happiest economies. But for many, it doesn't feel that way. As the economic slump takes its toll, the gap between rich and poor is widening. Many families are struggling to stay afloat, living hand to mouth and excluded from modern life. Living here is like being behind bars because you're only allowed to go out in certain times. I'm not living, I'm surviving. I'm surviving on, it's like rationing on food, rationing on electric and gas. It's not life at all. The scary thing about it all really is, I just, it's, it's hard to see a future. It's hard to see anything beyond what's here now. But what is the true scale of poverty in Britain today? And what exactly do we mean by being poor? A study funded by the Economic and Social Research Council has set out to answer those questions in what they say is the largest survey ever conducted into living standards in the UK. Tonight has had exclusive access to that survey. This survey doesn't just look at the incomes people have and what they spend their money on like government surveys do. It also looks at the way they live, their actual living conditions, uh, what they can afford and what they cannot afford. It's the latest in a series of reports looking at living standards and spanning 30 years. The first, in 1983, was the subject of an ITV documentary. In the 1980s, virtually no one dies of starvation in Britain. But there are those for whom poverty remains a matter of life and death. So has the nature of poverty changed in the last 30 years, and if so, how? To find out, researchers asked 1,500 people from a cross-section of society what they considered necessities. Not surprisingly, more people now say owning a computer with internet access and a mobile phone is essential. But a warm, damp-free home and enough food for your family remain the basics almost everyone agrees no one should have to go without. What we're talking about is not people going without luxuries, but without the basic necessities. The ability to feed themselves and their children, going without adequate clothing, a warm coat in winter, or shoes that fit their children's feet. Researchers drew up a list of items that most people in their one and a half thousand sample considered necessities. Using this list as the benchmark, the study then looked at the living standards of more than 12,000 people. Anyone who couldn't afford three necessities was deemed to be living in poverty. The report's authors say their findings are shocking and that more people are living in poverty today than they were 30 years ago. They conclude that the unemployed, the sick and disabled and the elderly make up a substantial proportion of the poor. But the working poor, families with children and in low paid jobs were among the hardest hit. The impact on children is a particular focus of the report. In the poorest families, they've got £12 a day per person to live on. That's to pay for their heating, that's to pay for travel, that's to pay for food, that's to pay for something like ele electricity, gas, and um, for the television. Never mind, there's nothing to do with trips or a social life. £12 a day, that's the reality of child poverty in Britain. The Living Standards Report finds that four million children are living in deprivation children like Tyrone. I don't want to bring my friends here because I don't, it will be embarrassing because of the stay of the house. It suggests 1.4 million children in Britain live in homes that aren't adequately heated. 600,000 live in overcrowded conditions and two and a half million live in homes that are damp. Tyrone shares a small, damp council flat with his mum, Renee, two sisters, Cherise and Zanisha, brother, Javan, and grandma, Edith. The damp in this room is right in the, right in the corner of, of the room. And there, there's damp at the sides and on the window sills. <coughs> the council has now treated the damp in two of the bedrooms. But the third bedroom, Tyrone's, 
remains in poor condition. Water runs in here because it's not sealed properly and damp, and damp builds up on the sides and the corners and it's worse over in that corner. The damp has penetrated beds, furniture and clothing, rendering it useless. Two of the bedrooms are now out of use. I had to throw out all the furniture and so at the moment there's no beds in the flat, there's no wardrobes in the children's room. This is my mum's bed, but it got mouldy so we can't sleep on it anywhere any, anymore. Having too few beds leaves the three generations living in just two rooms. Their belongings are piled in every corner of the lounge. Renee sleeps on the sofa, her daughter's on the floor, and the boys share a room and a bed with their grandma. I sleep on the far end here, and my grandma sleeps here. Most of the time it's cold because the radiator doesn't work well sometimes. Damp is creeping its way right around the room from that corner. Renee is a single mother and receives no maintenance for any of her four children. She works full time as a mental health support worker. If she works overtime, she can earn up to £1,600 a month. But a thousand of that goes on rent and childcare costs, and what's left is topped up by working tax credit and child related benefits. It's quite hard because you're working all the time and you're seeing less of your children, but it has to be done. You need to get income to keep a roof over your head as well. Because if I don't do that, I've had the rent officer calling me. Many times I've been having three eviction letters already. The Living Standards Survey finds that more than one in 20 children in the UK have nowhere safe to play outside. 3.1 million are missing out on leisure and social activities and half a million don't have a quiet place to study or access to the internet at home. So many children can't have a normal childhood, things that other children take for granted. So you can't have sleepovers, you can't join the clubs or the brownies or go swimming or take part in sport. And actually you can't do your homework because you don't have access to a computer and you don't have access to the internet. That's a normal part of childhood nowadays. I feel especially Sorry for the children, because they were so overcrowded, there's nowhere for them to play. You don't want to let them out, you know. You want to keep a constant eye on them. So it's like they're trapped there in prison while they should have freedom. It would be better if we had more money, because we, so we could have a better place to live, and more room for all of us to play. And it, and it would be better if we had a garden for me and Zanisha. There are so many children living such a grim existence and that we don't see it. And actually, our attitudes to this have hardened. Um, this is a wake-up call. This report is a wake-up call. And I want people to see what Bernardo sees every day, which is the relentless grinding down of people by poverty. The study says that attitudes to poverty have hardened over the past 30 years. A Christmas and birthday present is today considered a luxury. In 1983, it was a necessity. And adults being able to afford a one-week holiday once a year is no longer regarded as a necessity either. Austerity has had an effect on the views of the population on what they should be able to afford, what they should be able to have and how they should live, have been impoverished they've been depressed by the recession. The unemployed represent the second largest group living in poverty, according to the survey out today. It says 1.8 million unemployed people are living in poverty. This is Redcar in the northeast. Once a bustling seaside town with a thriving steel industry, it's now blighted by unemployment. For every 12 people on Job Seekers Allowance here, there is only one vacancy. One in 10 men is out of work, and a third of those are aged under 24. I am on, how can I put it? I'm living off breadcrumbs at the moment. I can't afford anything else. I am quite 
I would I would put myself as at the bottom end, bottom end of the, the food chain, if you know if you know what I mean. Mark Conway is 21 years old. He has two A levels, a BTEC, and a number of GCSEs. But since leaving college four years ago, Mark hasn't found a permanent job. There's absolutely nothing around here. The past few years have been hard for looking for work. It really has. Mark's only income from Job Seekers Allowance is £53 a week. He lives in a one bedroom council flat which is subsidised by housing benefit. Usually, at the beginning of the weeks, I uh, put my money in uh, two piles. Uh, just so I don't overspend, I put £53 in each pile because it works out as a £106 a fortnight or whatever it is like that. Uh, just so I can get by, it's a uh, £15 for bus fare because it comes to £14 something or other. Uh, £10 gas, which uh, if you use wisely it, can, it will last the fortnight. Uh, £15 food. I don't know where they're expecting us to get money for that. Just, just to even turn the lights on or heat the boiler so you can have a bath or turn the cooker on. It's ridiculous. It really is. It's stupid. Almost a million young people are now unemployed across the UK. Oh, I've run out of gas. There are young people who, who can't afford to get to a job interview. They can't afford to print out their CV to take it to a job interview. There are young people who can't afford to dress for an interview. Um, so these are all, all huge, huge problems. They're huge barriers to young people getting into work. According to the Living Standards Survey, 20% of those who are unemployed and looking for work can't afford appropriate clothes for a job interview. When Mark goes job hunting, he wears the only smart clothes he owns, a suit he has had since school. This is my prom suit that still fits me. Uh, it's not special. Most people my age usually get a new suit when they go out job hunting, but uh, well, I haven't, as you can see. This is the only one I've got, so I have to bear with it and live with it, really. <clears throat> Wish me luck. Mark's family live nearby. He says they're the only support he has. The only thing that's keeping me close is family, because if I move away and I'm on job seekers and I've got no money and I've got no friends, I wouldn't be able to cook. I was going to get up and go uh, down uh, to my mate Chris in Kent just to get away, because I had no money, no job. Hang on. Does it make you angry? Yeah, it, 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 people don't know how it affects you, they really don't. It's just people don't understand the hardship other people go through. The Living Standards Survey suggests 30 million people, almost half of the population, are financially insecure. This means they can't afford to save five pounds a week, make pension contributions, or pay an unexpected bill of 500 pounds. This is disaster for the long term, because it means that people were not just looking at impoverished lives today, but if they can't afford pensions and savings, they're looking at poverty in old age. Money comes in one hand and gets paid out with the other, whether it be food shopping or bills. Um, there's no in-between. <laughs> the Cox family is one of the millions identified by the study as being perched on a financial cliff edge. You're dead lucky. Martin and Paula are unemployed. Their house is in negative equity and they have no pension or savings. Three of their four sons still live at home. Some weeks something might come up like Tim might need a pair of trainers or Tom might need a pair of trainers or Something might come up, we not, might not be able to afford it that week, but we'll make sacrifices the week after. Because I was 20p less for the gas and electricity, I've now been charged £15 because it wasn't in the bank. So I'll have to juggle that 
for next month when it comes out. Make sure that extra £15 in there. I'll do it. Their income for a family of five is just over £1,300 a month. Once all the regular bills are paid, Paula says there isn't much left for food. If I had some more money to spend on food, we'd have to really live on well, better cuts of meat, surely, and uh, you know more fresh vegetables you could afford to buy. Well, a lot more of better food than what we're living on now. We're just scraping the barrel, I'm sure. I mean, sometimes we don't even eat three times a day. Well, we don't eat three times a day. It'll be breakfast and it'll be a dinner. The poverty study finds that four million adults and children aren't properly fed in Britain today. And 28% of parents are going without food so their children can eat. Parents are making huge sacrifices to try and protect their children. For example, we know that almost all mothers and a lot of fathers skimp on their own food so that their children may eat adequately. This isn't a life. This is a struggle. This is a real hard, long road struggle. It's been a long road. There's no end to that road. It just keeps going on and on. It's like I'm going to forever walk that road. And that's scary. That's scary. I, I, I want to change that. I'm doing whatever I can to change that. But according to the report's authors, one of the most surprising statistics to emerge from their study is that 2.1 million people in work and supporting a family are living in poverty. There used to be an assumption that if you were able to find a job, then you'd be OK. You'd certainly not be in poverty. You might not have the same standard of living as, as somebody living down the road, but you'd be OK. That's just not the case anymore. Dave Rook and Christy Locke are a hard-working couple with a young baby. They are neither the squeezed middle nor the unemployed. They're the working poor. It, it is a vicious circle, yeah. We, we're constantly, you know, we work hard and money goes out on bills, so we're never seeing any of the money that we're actually earning. And that, that's quite depressing in itself when you, you, you work all that time and you get nothing back from it. Both work part-time in order to avoid childcare costs. Between them, they earn £1,400 a month. But once they've paid their regular bills and shopped for food, they're left with £66. That covers everything from holidays, social outings, birthdays, and even Christmas presents. £12, baby. As a dad, it sort of makes me feel like a failure, really, because, uh, you know, Everybody's got that ideal that father goes out, works hard, brings home the bacon, but it doesn't matter whether you go out and work hard or not nowadays because you, you, the bills that we're blessed with, as I'll say, um, they just make things impossible. These two have old-fashioned values. They say they want to raise their son the right way and they have a work ethic. There's been a few times where we thought we'd be better off if we don't work, but we don't want to bring Leighton up in a family that just thinks, oh, I'll just take off the government and you want him to know that his parents have to go to work. But they're starting to question whether they'd be better off if they split up. Financially, it makes more sense for me and Christy not to be in a relationship, me to find a, a bed sit for £70 a week and we're and her to claim all the benefits and we're... £700, £800 pound a month better off. Um, the government did say that when you're a working family, you'd always be better than if you were on benefits. That's simply not the case. It would be better if we, we weren't a family unit anymore. In his recent budget speech, the Chancellor pledged to support those who work and try to be independent of the state. According to today's survey, Dave and Christy are among 11 million people across the UK who feel socially excluded. Poverty is about not having enough money, enough resources to participate as a full citizen in UK society. Not to be able to do the things that most people take for granted or have the basic necessities of life. And that means that millions of people are not participating. They're not part of mainstream UK society to the full extent. It's match day in Chester and a rare afternoon out for Dave. 
He's been saving for three months to watch his team play. The ticket is £12. Even so, he feels guilty about his day out when money is tight. Having the money to, to go and watch the games doesn't come around that often. And it's only £12 for a ticket to go and watch them as well. And that's, it's, it's nothing to, to most people, but that's the difference between putting gas or electric or feeding my family. The Department of Work and Pensions has criticised the methodology of the Living Standards Survey. The government says it's committed to eradicating child poverty and says the latest figures show 600,000 people have moved out of relative poverty. It's using a multi-dimensional approach to tackle root causes of poverty and adds that by next year, another two million low earners will have been taken out of paying tax altogether. Just chilling. Since filming, Christy has been made redundant, but Dave has got a full-time job. Martin is still doing all he can to find work, but he's keeping himself busy by volunteering. I think it gives you self, you know, your self-esteem back. I mean, even though I don't get paid, I still like to come here and I still feel as though I've done a good day's work when I leave, and that's why I come in. Renee and her family continue to live in their damp and overcrowded flat. And Mark's search for a job goes on. The authors of today's report into living standards say austerity measures coming into effect over the next few months will make things worse for those already living in breadline Britain. The Department of Work and Pension says it expects three million people to be better off as a result of benefit changes coming into effect next week. Now, if you'd like more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at itv.com tonight. Until next time, though, good evening and thanks for watching.